welcome to your yoga practice. Today we're going to play around with a pose that has become one of my favorites to play with, especially as I have become a little stronger in my body. And that pose is half moon. So we'll start with triangle and side angle pose and we'll see what it takes to find our stacking and our stability in our half moon and then we'll explore what it's like to really start taking flight in it. Maybe exploring some binding. So we're in for a bit of an adventure. Lots of stops along the way. Blocks are very much recommended. And also an open mind and an invitation to fall as much as you would like. Remember you're pretty low to the ground if you want to put some pillows around you so that they can catch you when you fall, feel free. And know that the way the pose looks in my body is simply a guide. It's simply a reference. It is not the way it's supposed to look like in your body. All those pictures you see of yoga poses, those are guides, those are references, those aren't mirrors you will look completely different and that is a beautiful thing. All right, enough of that. Let's come into a downward facing dog and that's where we will enter a lot of the poses. So finding your way maybe to a tabletop first with hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Tuck the toes under and then start straightening your legs or straighten-ish your legs as you send your hips up and back, pressing into your hands and making an upside down V with your body. Imagine your hips reaching further and further up and maybe as you're here you come up onto your tiptoes and you just send one heel at a time towards the mat as you bend the opposite knees. You're walking the dog. Bending one knee at a time, taking this dog for a walk, staying nice and even with the pressure in all the parts of your hand. Hands, plural. And then find some stillness here. We'll start with the left leg. Reach the left leg up and back. Coming into your three-legged dog, keeping the hips nice and level here. So your leg isn't going to reach super high because of that. That's perfect. And then step, big, long, big step with that left leg. Maybe that knee comes towards your chest to make room. And then place that foot in between the hands. And then spin the right heel down. And as you're here, you can have your fingertips still on the floor. Check to see the alignment of your feet. So your left heel, this front foot, the left heel, if you made a straight line all the way back to that right foot, it would go right into the middle of that arch and that's what you want. So from here, rise up and then your torso will face towards the side. This is a hip opener. So your left knee will be facing and pointing and tracking the last two toes. You can even place your hand to the outside of the thigh and press the thigh into the hand to feel that. And then you want your hips facing the long edge of your mat, really lunge down into the left leg. So sometimes we think that our legs are a lot shorter than they really are. So you might need to really widen your legs and widen that stance. Your hips are going to be nice and level. So we don't wanna be hiking up this hip. That happens a lot. We also don't want to do the opposite. So we want them nice and level. Want our shoulders over the hips. So not forward, not back, not back or forward. We want it nice and stacked. Belly button towards your spines and the arms are kind of like that cherry on top of the sundae. They're nice and strong. No noodle arms. They're nice strong arms and your gaze is over the left middle finger. This is your warrior two. From here straight in the front leg. Maybe walking that back foot just slightly. I always do. It just feels better in my body. Reach the left arm forward and then like cartwheel your arms down and find a place for your left hand to rest. This is where the block comes in. So you can bring the block at any height. 
maybe the tallest height. The block will go inside that left foot. And the left hand goes on the block. Reach the right arm up and you're in your triangle pose. Hmm. And you can have your hand lower if you'd like. We want lots of stacking happening here. So right hip stacking on top of left, really bringing that left glute underneath you. And then right shoulder stacking on top of left also. And so your arms are almost in the straight line, trying not to flail, I usually do. <laughs> and <laughs> trying to be a little bit more mindful of containing my limbs. My limbs are very long, I just like to, they like to flop sometimes. It's okay. All right, so now let's explore that half moon. Bring the right hand to your hip. And this hip situation, this can stay the whole time. You don't have to extend the arm ever. You can just leave your hand right in that hip. All right. Bend the left knee, and we're gonna actually change where the block is. The block will go to the outside. And then before we go forward with the block, step forward with that right foot. Awesome. And then reach that left hand forward and slightly to the left. And then maybe you just come on to those left toes, right toes, as you start leaning the weight over your left leg. And then if you'd like, keeping that right hand on the right hip, you can start to lift up that right leg. You'll notice that I'm really stacking my hips. I'm flexing my right foot. And I am uh, really keeping my torso in line with the wall in front of me. And then only if it serves you, you can reach that right hand up. Finding your nice stable half moon. No fancy stuff here, just finding your stability, finding your stacking. Your gaze can be slightly down to the floor, can be in front of you. If you're a risk taker, you can try to find that top thumb. It's really hard to do though. All right, and so to get out exactly the way you came in, start to step back that right foot, walk the block back in and find your way back into that triangle pose. Rise your body up and back into that warrior two. Awesome, okay. So we're gonna try that again. So from warrior two, straight in the front leg, maybe you walk in that right leg slightly. Reach the left arm forward and then find your hand on the block. And you can start with the block inside if you'd like. That right hand can be extending up, so we're in our triangle pose. Okay, now we're going to go into that half moon again. So bring that right hand to the hip, move the block to the outside of the foot, step the right foot in, and then reach that left hand forward and to the left with the block. And then start to either come on to the right toes or start to lift up that right leg, and it's just in line with that hip. Stacking the hips, stacking the shoulders, and then reaching the hand up. And then maybe you start to come up onto the left fingertips, and maybe you lift the hand off the block, and then maybe it comes onto your heart. Bring your hand down if it was up, and then big step back with the right foot, Bringing the block in, finding your triangle pose. <sighs> and then lifting your body up and coming back into that warrior two. And you can take lots of adjustments to get <laughs> to all these places. Okay, we're going to do one more variation. We're going to find a bind once we're there. Just straighten the front leg, walk that right foot in. Reach the left hand forward, and then find your hand on the block, finding that triangle pose. <sighs> and then right hand to hip. Place the block to the outside of the foot. And I do that because that's the direction we're going to go. And then step in with the right foot, walk the left hand forward, and then either come on to the tiptoes or glide that right leg. All right, bring your knee to your chest. 
Grab back for your ankle and then send that leg back. So you're kicking the leg into the hand. It's almost like a nice little back bend and this is called Shapasana. Ardha Chandra is the half moon and then Shapasana adds the bind. Release the leg, do not slingshot it. Step back with that right leg. Bring the block back, finding your triangle pose. And then come up and find your warrior two. Whew. Very nice. <laughs> Flip the front palm and take a reverse warrior. So right hand goes down, left arm goes up, taking a side bend. And then as you exhale, cartwheel the hands forward framing the front foot, and then step your left foot to meet the right. I mean, into your downward facing dog. Awesome. <sighs> All right. So I am going to show you what it looks like from the back, the <laughs> this side, so that you can see how the stacking looks like from the back. I think it's helpful. This time, right leg up and back finding your three-legged dog. Remember to keep those hips squared so your leg will not go up as far as you might want it to. And then big step forward with the right leg. Remember that you can bring the knee towards your chest to make more space. And then right foot forward. Okay, fingertips are still on the mat. Spin the left heel down and then look at your right heel and see that if you made a line with that heel, it would intercept the left inner arch. Awesome. Rise up with your body, and now we'll find our warrior two on this side. So lunging that right knee forward, right knee is tracking with the last two toes. You can even bring the hand to the thigh and press the thigh into the hand. Awesome. And then the hips are not tilted. They're nice and even. Shoulders are stacking over the hips. And then the arms are that cherry on top of this warrior two Sunday. No noodle arms, instead nice strong arms. Keep lunging that right knee. And then when you're ready, straightening the right leg, walking in the left foot slightly. Reach the right hand forward and then tip almost like a teapot and bring the block. Underneath the right hand, Sally found someone to work at. And then find your triangle pose, really pressing into your feet, stacking left shoulder on top of right shoulder, left hip on top of right hip, belly button towards your spine. Okay, and then we turn this into our half moon. So left hand to the left hip. Bring that block to the outside of the right foot and then step in with the left foot. Bring that right hand forward slightly to the right and then either start coming on to the tippy toes or start gliding that left foot up, keeping the hips stacked. Maybe extending the right hand, left hand. All right. Hmm. So in this one, we're simply exploring the stability. All right, lower that left leg, planting the foot down, bringing that block back and finding your triangle pose. And then come up, find your warrior two. Excellent, all right, so the next time we're gonna try floating. Straighten the right leg. Maybe you walk in that left foot slightly. Reach forward and find your triangle pose. <sighs> so triangle pose, we're already in this position where our, block, our body is facing the side. So it's a very, it's a natural-ish transition to get into half moon. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Move the block to the outside of the right foot and then step that left foot in. Move the block forward and to the right. Start gliding onto those tiptoes and then lift that left leg up. Maybe you reach the left arm up and then maybe you come up onto your fingertips. Lift up that right hand, maybe place it on your heart. 
finding a hovering half moon. Plant the hand back down. Stepping back with that left leg, moving the block back to place, straightening the right leg, finding your triangle pose, and then come up, find your warrior two. <sighs> okay, we got one more with a bind. Straighten the front leg, walking that left foot, reach forward, find your triangle pose. Ah, all right, left hand to left hip. Bring the block to the outside of the right foot. Bend the right knee, step the left foot forward. Bring the right hand and block forward and to the right. Start coming on to the left toes. Maybe you glide that left leg up. Keep the right hand planted in this round. Bring the left knee towards your chest to reach it back for your left ankle, and then start moving that leg back, flexing the foot and kicking that foot into your hand. Your body kind of finds this back bend. Your body will also want to fall backwards, <laughs> and that is okay. This is Ardha Chandra, half moon, Shapasana has a bind. Release that foot, stepping it back, that was wobbly. Finding your triangle pose. And then come up. Find your half moon. Inhale, flip the front palm. Reverse your warrior. And then exhale, cartwheeling the hands down. Pivot onto the left toes. Move the block if it's in your way. And then step back. Downward facing dog. All right. Send your knees wide to the wide edges of your mat. Big toes to touch hips to heels, bring your arms forward, forehead to the mat. I'm gonna lift up so I can talk to you. And now we are in our child's pose. All right, so you did it. You explored half moon, so fun. And one of the next practices, we'll play with that shape of half moon, but more of a hovering, very controlled way. That was controlled, but this will be like even more like with our core and legs and everything. Love half moon because it really teaches your body to work with itself. It's a very different way of stabilizing the lower body with the core. There's a lot of glutes involved. As you get stronger in your yoga practice, it'll just feel so much more natural. All right. Come up, maybe you sit on your shins and heels. We call this hero pose or vajrasana in yoga. You can also sit in an easy seat so it's like cross-legged. <sighs> Bring your hands on top of your heart and just feel your heartbeat after doing all of that. And I hope you know how amazing you are for taking that pause, for taking this time for you. That's why we do yoga, is to take the time for ourselves so that we can feel good in our bodies. All right, thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope that you have the most beautiful day. Bye.